In today's video, I share how to start with a plane, then we create a pattern that is based on the triangles, and then we turn that into this pattern. So let's uh, jump in. To start, we need some base geometry. So let's create a plane. So I'll double click here and bring in a plane. And when we bring in plane surface, we can plug in X and Y. So let's plug in 100 for the X and Y. Now let's take this and create the middle point. So I'll double click here and go to the area component. And with the area component plugged in to the plane, you see that we get the exact centroid of this surface. Now this is going to be the location of where we create a polygon. This polygon is actually going to be, so um, there's different ways to create the different segments. One is creating a slider. So we can say three, two, nine. The other way is right clicking, setting an integer. And this way you can, you know, set one specific shape. For the most part, what we'll be doing for this one is only using three because that's what we need to create that pattern. So now that we have this, let's take this polygon and explode it. Now let's take each segment and separate them. So for that, I'll bring in list item. Once we plug in our segments into the list and we hide the polygon and the exploded component, we'll see that we have one of these. Now, if we zoom in here, we can add more or we can add more index uh, numbers here. So we can right click here, set multiple integers and say zero, one, and two, or we can go in here and separate them this way. The reason why I like them this way is because we have individual outputs for each. So now we have these three and they're all in this component. So now let's bring in the next component, which is called contour. This will create a set of contour lines on a shape. So we'll plug in our plane for the shape and our point for the centroid. The direction is going to be one of these and the distance we can give a number. So we'll say 1.5. And you'll see that this line is the one that creates starting at the center point, springing out. Now, the other thing is we can pick a radius for this. So we can double click here and say uh, 15. It's not going to matter much, but what it can do is if we take the segment length, and we use this as the distance, you'll see that we're getting kind of close to the distance there. It's not exact, so uh, I'll show you the reason why that's important. Um, and that's because here at the end, you want it to line up perfect. You want uh, the distance here and the distance from here to the corner to be the same. Um, we, there are ways to do that. But for now, let's move on and let's plug in the rest of the directions. So I have this direction, I can hold down shift and add additional directions to create the pattern. Using this base geometry. So as you can see, there's lines parallel to this one, there's lines parallel to this one and to this one. It's a little bit, uh, sometimes it's a little bit confusing to see, but it will create that pattern. Now, the thing that's important to know is the distance in between. So if we have the distance here, we want to move 
one of these. So we'll take this and we'll actually have the spring point be in a different place. So I'll unplug one of these. And I'll copy the contour component. Now I'll plug in this bottom one into the direction. This way I have this one in a separate one. Now this one will have a different spring point because this one has the center one as a spring point. The spring point for this one will actually have to be halfway. So not here, but halfway between these two. So this is where we need to change that center point from being here to being in the center of halfway in the direct. So if it's, let's say here, if this is 10, the distance in between is 10, it has to be shifted by five. So we'll take this one and we will move this set of contours in which direction? In this same direction. So we'll move using amplitude. This set of contours by half of 10, so 10 divided by two. And we can hide this one and see that we have now that pattern. The thing is that technically it shifted the whole pattern and we do not want to shift the pattern. We All we want to shift is just the point. So we can easily Instead of moving the contours, let's go to the centroid and let's move the centroid in that direction and then use that point as a point where it springs from. Now I do have to enable preview and you'll see that now it works. So this is a pattern that I wanted to show you. It's a little bit tricky, but all it is is creating a triangular pattern and shifting the point halfway of the distance achieve the pattern now this is a uh, I, I saw it's like a woven pattern it's called kagom pattern but that's not necessarily what I wanted to show with this I want to show that the pattern that you could actually extract from this which is um, kind of cool so let me show you that to get that pattern we have to take this one these two sets of contours and intersect them so I will I like to use the intersect component or this tab and go to physical and it's curve and curve. Let me, I don't recall which one it is. So I think it's this one curve and curve intersection. This gives us the ability to, if we flatten one side, it gives us the intersecting points and let's flatten this side. We do want to get all of the intersecting points, including these. But flattening seems to only be getting us those. So the other way is to, and it's not ideal, is to split the surface. So we'll bring in a split component, which is surface split. And we can use these contours, flattened input, and we can use the surface that we can explode. Now with these fragments, I like to erep join, flatten the input, and ultimately going to explode or deconstruct. Not deconstruct its edges. Actually, if we just did this, so 
we construct. We don't necessarily have to join it, but we do have to um, remove all the redundant points. So we'll bring in a call vertices or call duplicates. I like to use this one. We can use the vertices, plug them into the points, and you'll see that here we have how many points? 1,120 because they're redundant here. But here we have, when we flatten the input, we see that we only have, oh, we still have that many points. Let's see if you can. So that didn't really necessarily work. The idea is that we want to get every single one of those points. So let me try to get that real quick. All right, so the way to do it was to join the B reps and then extract just the vertices here. And we can, let's see if this works with this one, this we have here, how many points? 319. And if we plug this here and we flatten it, let's see how many points we have now, 319. So this won't really do much, but what, it, what we can do now that we have this is we can create the pattern. So now let's go to Voronoi. And now let's use the vertices as our points. Notice how the cool pattern that it creates. It creates the, this, rhombus that then is kind of arrayed around and this is a common pattern that you've probably seen uh, which is really cool that it's actually based off of the triangular kegon pattern so with this one we can change some of the parameters of the shape because you can see four and, and five does give a cool um, different pattern but when you go to six it'll be the same so six and three Are the ones that give us the the result that we want and the spacing is going to be determined with this slider so i'll take the edge of this plane or create a yeah let's go to edges you wrap that I'll join the curve here just in case we have how many four curves and this will join it into one that we can offset. Because this will give us our cropping tool. So with distance, we'll go to a negative value, giving us an offset to the inside. Now we can use this input here. Let's give it a value of 15 and use this curve as our boundary for our pattern. So let's With this, we can now, um, let's crop it a little bit more. Now let's bring in an area component, or we already have that here. Let's bring in a sphere, and let's place that with the centroid on to the base. And for the radius, either, uh, well, let's bring in a custom slider. So let's go 50 and change this up and down. Now let's project this pattern onto it. 
we'll type in project. Project onto a DREP. So we'll take these cells. Those will be the curves. The sphere is going to be our DREP. And direction, it's our, it already has a direction. It has 0, 0, 1, which means um, the Z is uh, one vector in the Z, which means up and down. Now let's Table the preview on the sphere and the pattern. Sorry about the background sound. Now with this, you see that we have a pattern on that and we can still change the slider here. So let's increase the pattern size or the amount of uh, divisions in here. That's going to be distance 10. Let's change that to 8. And now let's take this and create the next one, which is going to be multiply. And let's just bring in a value for the strut size. But as you can see, we we're getting something now there. I think there are redundant lines here. So this is where um, m more optimizing would need to be done to kind of get this right. But as you can see, we can create this, this cool pattern using a simple method of projecting, uh, using contours, extracting the points, and using Voronoi to further um, create more geometrical patterns. So. Let me know if you have any questions and if you, if you enjoyed this tutorial, um, make sure to subscribe if you like this content and um, I hope to see you next time. If you have any questions or any other ideas, let me know. If you want to get in contact with me, check out my website, cotettydavid.com. There you can find a way to contact me. Also courses and scripts for Rhino and Grasshopper. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.